Hey there, Sart here. Back again, we're gonna take on the Empress's Resolution Legend difficulty. In my previous video, uh, you saw me take the uh, Party of Five or Less mission. We did not get the turn count missions in that one. We're gonna go back and get the turn count missions in this one by adding a sixth unit. All right, and so I'm gonna look on my friends list. Um, a lot of people are building their Starlight Elenas if they have them for this trial. Um, and so I'm just going to take Kraus here. Um, Kraus has their Starlight Elena built for it. And a lot of people uh, seem to be building their, their Elenas with Katanas. Um, especially if you happen to have this Katana. Which was a, it was a limited item from the uh, Final Fantasy X event a while back. But it's, it's got a 100% Fairy Killer on it. Which is, is one of the reasons why a lot of people like building uh, their, uh, Elena's with the, with this particular katana, and then just going full katana build. That and a lot of people, uh, tend to like using Kaito on this trial. Um, he is objectively better, um, for this trial than Fryevia is, but Fryevia, if you saw my previous video, Fryevia works just as well. And if you were to add a, a sixth unit, Fryevia, um, would still work just as well to get this in, in the turn count. Um, but I'm going to use Kaito just to show you a different, um, just a different team setup here. Um, I'm also going to try something that I alluded to in my previous video, and I want to show you something. So, um, you see I've got, um, you know, Aerith and Red 13 here. Um, they're here strictly for the fire imbue. You may notice this team doesn't have a fire in peril. And so what I've done is I've equipped um, Aerith here with the leave things to me vision card. I, I wanted to try this little trick because I kind of alluded to this in my previous video, but you could actually with this, since this is a preemptive imperil, it's 120% preemptive fire imperil for four turns, you can use Kaito's ability that lengthens debuffs and imperils for three turns to then extend that and it remains undispellable for those three extra turns and so we're going to try this now what this means is that if you want that fire and peril um you know basically have to finish it in eight turns or less so you have to have strong enough units to do it in eight turns or less if you want to take advantage of this little little trick it doesn't require any kind of imperil unit here. And so you could bring any unit in Aerith's place that can um, AoE imbue fire. Um, there are some units like a Marillith has in fire Aga, uh, which imbues everybody but doesn't imperil. That's another unit you can bring in. Um, the new, uh, what is it, the new uh, New Vision Ash that's on the current banner. She also has in fire Aga, and if you have her to EX3, it becomes in fire Raja. Um, and so that's another unit that can imp uh, imbue the team with fire and amplify, but doesn't come with an imperil. So this little trick might actually help you get that uh, taken care of. And so here's the team that I'm working with. Uh, I'm going to use Charlotte again just because I love Charlotte. She worked um, like a champ in the last one. She's going to work like a champ through this one as well. <clears throat> uh, we're bringing the original gangsta Elena as well. Um, and I'm bringing her because I want to note if, if you're bringing Kaito, but you would rather build your Starlight Elena with swords, um, it's important to note that Elena's sword in peril on Piercing Prism is undispellable. Notice how it says not dispellable there, and that's for five turns. So you can use that, and that Sword and Peril will remain on there. Morgana will not dispel it. So that's another just little uh, neat little trick there that, that could be helpful if you wanted to go Swords instead of Katanas on your Elena build. Um, so, yeah, we'll just start from the beginning here. So Sacred Shield Charlotte, same build as last time. Nothing has changed. Um... And, and I'll reiterate here, uh, you know, if, if you see a piece of gear here that you don't necessarily have, I'm thinking specifically like Dark Armor or Krylo's Veil, right? Um, don't, you know, don't sweat it too much. Um, like, for example, you can use Corundum Helm. Uh, that also has 20% across the board there. Um, you can also use uh, Avalanche Jesse's um, hat. <clears throat> 
uh, that has 20% across the board. So there are other options there. I, I just slapped on Cryo's Veil because it was the first one that popped up. Um, dark Armor, there are fewer options out there. But just remember that the, the ones that are important are the Ice Resist, the Light Resist, and the Dark Resist. So whatever armor you do put on there, make sure um, that you're, you know, you're focusing on Ice, Light, and Dark. Um, and then, yeah, and then more gear that's just uh, to buff up those resistances. She's also the, the Evade Provoke unit. You don't have to make Charlotte the Evade Provoke unit on this one. You could easily make Aerith the Evade Provoke unit if you wanted to. That way you could fit more resistances into, um, into Charlotte. And so that's, that's just a... a another potential option there. Um, however, it does become problematic when you want to do the re-raise on Charlotte because that comes with a provoke. So it might be better to just leave Charlotte as the evade provoke unit. But she's fairly easy to build because she comes with a lot of ice and light resist already. So then you just have to focus on the other ones. And you see we've got at least 100% across the board. Make sure your status resistance is also null across the board for Charlotte. Uh, with Elena, um, we're not... She's not going to be doing a whole lot of damage, but you can go ahead and, you know, build some damage. The most important thing, though, is just Dark Resist, all right? I've got 110. Um, that should be, you know, a minimum of Dark Resist, to be honest with you. Uh, and then I gave her some killers. You know, she's not a fantastic build here. We'll see. She doesn't do, you know, a whole heap of damage, but <clears throat> she's really here just to chain and to, to help, you know, build up the chain cap quickly. We will be spending some time in her Brave Shift form, however. Uh, so I gave her, you know, some extra Dark Resist there, but nothing special. She's, you know, uh, Treasured Memorial Ring is there for the 600 morale. All right. Um, <clears throat> but she's got some neat skills here that are very, very useful. For example, you know, turn one uh, using Crystal Refragmentation, which removes all the debuffs, or sorry, all the imperils to the team and puts up 100% to all elements, which is very, very nice. Um, so she's pretty great for this trial. All right, and then uh, here's my Starlight Elena build. You see I've switched to katanas as well, just to sort of reflect what a katana build would look like as opposed to my sword build in the previous video. Uh, again, there's the Shimmering Blade. If you don't have Shimmering Blade, it might be better to go swords. Uh, that's just, I'm going to leave that up to you and, and depending on your gear. Um, otherwise, make sure she's got hidden power for the buffs. Um, I gave her this uh, this vision card just for some some extra uh, flat attack and mag. Just whatever is you know, use the best vision card you have in that situation. All right, and she's got 110 dark resistance. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so now let's move. Over. All right, so Aerith is just going to be in brave shift the whole time. Uh, you see, I gave her the Empress's Celestite Rod because I figured, hey, I got it in the last one, so now I can, now I feel justified that I can actually use it. I haven't upgraded it yet because I haven't gotten enough clears, um, but it does come still with 500 morale to start the battle, which is nice. If you upgrade it, that boosts it up to 1500 morale to start a battle. And then, uh, yeah, just some dark resist is important there. Um, status resist 10,000 needles this is important because the team's going to need mirage on a couple of turns and so basically what Aerith is going to do is go back and forth between imbuing the team with fire and doing 10,000 needles and that's basically all she does the whole fight and then of course the vision card is just for that preemptive fire and peril that we're going to take advantage of all right Kaito he's going to be spending his whole time in brave shift form as well so here's his build um, nothing too crazy. Make sure you got status resists. That's what Coin of Fate uh, is doing on here for the status. Because uh, I had a couple of times where he fell asleep on me. Uh, can't imagine falling asleep in the middle of a battle, but, you know, that's Kaito, I guess. Um, yeah, otherwise, nothing too fancy. Here are his killers. Uh, 275 human, 250 fairy. <clears throat> All right, um, now let's take a look at my friend here. Pretty much very, very similar build uh, to mine, except I used uh, Mumio Sword for the extra human killer. Um, yeah, otherwise very, very similar. 
Um, he used Hero Dies card. That's another great one for Elena on this one because it comes with a lot of flat attack and mag. So he's got 300 human, 275 fairy. All right, that's pretty nice. Um, let's see, I don't, did I show my killers on my Elena? Uh, mine is maxed fairy and human. Yeah, okay. Very cool. All right, <clears throat> so let's uh, let's see how we get this done, and let's hope, uh, like I said, uh, let's hope we get this done in in eight turns or less, because or else that fire and peril runs out. Now the neat thing with this team, if you wanted to, after the fire and peril is done, you can actually switch over to light to finish out the fight, um, because you can have uh, you can have the regular Elena imbue the team with light. And then she also can imperil light. So you could always do that. You know, once you run out of your fire imperil, you just switch everybody over to light uh, to finish out the fight. All right, I'm going to stop talking. Let's go ahead and get into the fight. <clears throat> All right, hopefully nothing goes wrong here. All right. So starting out, Charlotte is literally going to be on reload repeat, just doing Knight of Knights and Knight's Voice, all right? That's all she's going to do the entire fight, so you never have to worry about what she's doing. All right, and here we're just going to do Ardent Prayer for the Fire on View, and yeah, then just hit her with some fire, all right? That's just, you know, every little bit of morale, right? Okay, and then Kaito is going to do Torrential Downpour. That's for the 200% Fairy Killer. Undulating Waves. This is what's going to extend the Imperils. And then Deep Submersion for the Breaks and Katana Resistance. All right, so you see... All right, I'm not using Obsidian Embracer on this one, so you can see uh, these are the Breaks from, from Kaito's uh, passive. So Kaito does a preemptive Break uh, just as a passive. So those will get extended. So we've got four turns on these. We're going to do another three turns uh, added to that. Um, now you may think, oh, well, that's only seven turns, but in fact it should still be there um, on turn eight for us. Okay. Um, all right, original Elena is just going to do Crystal Refrag and Protection of Azure Crystal. She's going to be doing a little bit of morale fill at the just to get us us going here at the beginning. All right, um, and <clears throat> what we're going to do? We're actually going to skip Celestial Brilliance because since we're bringing OG Elena, she has a 160% human killer on it. So we're going to skip that, and we're just going to go ahead and do Stella Maris and Double Gemini. So this strategy actually works really well if you don't have an EX3 uh, Starlight Elena because you don't need that human killer for everybody. Okay, and yeah, Elena's going to do the human killer on, on the next turn. So, um, okay. All right. <clears throat> so, if you remember in the in my last video, my average damage was only you know was hovering around three hundred million. Um, hopefully, we should see better damage in this fight because now we have two Elenas, and so hopefully we'll see a bit better. Hopefully that'll be you know five hundred to three hundred or five hundred to six hundred million uh, damage every turn. All right, so now we're gonna do ten thousand needles. That's for the Mirage stack. Okay. <clears throat> Helena super luminal to Azure Might and then just morale fill. Actually, wait a minute. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, yep, yeah, no, that's fine. Alright. And then Kaito will do deep submersion. Let's just do three deep submersions, that's fine. Alright, because it honestly doesn't matter. Alright, and then triple Gemini. All right, and then just to show, all right, so you see we've still got six turns left on that fire imperil. She cannot dispel it. Uh, you also notice the large sword imperil is also on there. 
Um, <clears throat> however, the weapon imperils do not get extended. It only extends... Um, so Kaito's ability will only extend breaks and uh, elemental imperils. It will not extend um, weapon imperils. So keep that in mind. If you were thinking, oh, good, I can get an extra uh, large sword imperil, you know, for, for a unit or something like that. Yeah, it's not going to work. All right, so now we're just going to chain it up. Take some healthy chunks out of the damage there. All right, Sacred Shield. Charlotte, reload, repeat. All right, yeah, all right. 568, that's pretty good. <clears throat> Charlotte's going to cover everything. <laughs> all right. So now Aerith is going to switch back to Fire Imbue and then Flame Thing. This time we're actually going to let her build up the chain a little bit. All right, now we're going to do we're going to do Azure Might again. All right, just because we want to make sure because it only lasts for three turns. So this is the last turn we're actually going to be in her Brave Shift form uh, until we until after we push the threshold. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and re-up that. All right, and we're also going to re-up our fairy kill. Well, actually, hold on. I don't think we need to do that yet, right? How many, how many more turns do we have on the fairy killer? Yeah, see, we've only got one turn left on that. So I'm going to re-up that because we want to... Next turn, we're going to push the threshold. So we want to make sure that we've got our killers ready to go. Okay. All right, so yep, I'm in prayer. All right, that's a good spot to be in. You know, uh, anywhere between 50 and 60 is a good spot to be in here, so we can push pretty deep into the, uh, pretty deep into threshold territory. We're not gonna push both thresholds here. You know, this team's not strong enough. Even if, even with two Starlight Elena's, I'm still not, you know, the, the team's not strong enough to push both. So, <clears throat> uh, we should end up somewhere around 40% here on this turn. All right, we're going to do another 10,000 needles for Mirage. Elena's now going to shift. We're going to do Piercing Prism, Blade of Salvation, Crystal Refraction. Uh, you can see we've only got 111% morale, so our, our morale skills are not going to be doing a whole heap of damage here, but, you know, every little bit counts in this fight. And so we're going to make this our big one, so we're going to use Star Supernova here. Alright, and let's make sure everyone's got their buffs, so we should have our good uh, Human Killer buff, Fairy Killer buff. Yep, everyone is buffed and ready to go. All right. <clears throat> so I think we're good. Let's just chain it up. We're going to let Kaito and Elena build the chain up first, and then we're going to send the, the two Starlight Elenas. All right. That's a good spot to be in. All right. So here Charlotte is uh, almost certainly going to die. There is a small chance that if she dies too quickly, um, that the um, some of the magic will, yeah, you see one, <laughs> like one magic spell hit Aerith there, but Aerith is, is already uh, very resistant to, to light. Um, so there is always that small chance. It rarely happens because I've 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 test I've done a test run uh, on this multiple times, and it almost always Charlotte gets up and tanks whatever magic attacks uh, come after the Ghastly Nightmare. Also, do note, there is a chance that Morgana does not use Ghastly Nightmare um, on this turn. Uh, 
or, or on the turn that you push the threshold. And if she doesn't do it, she almost definitely will do it the following turn. Because um, th the chance is very high that she does Ghastly Nightmare uh, any turn after you push the 50% threshold. But she will only do it once uh, after that. And then there's a guaranteed Ghastly Nightmare after the 30% threshold. So if... Morgana did not do Ghastly Nightmare here. I would want to hold off on doing the Threshold because then it's almost guaranteed I would get two Ghastly Nightmares. And that would be a problem for Charlotte. Alright. Okay, so this is a Fire Imbue turn. Now, you saw in my previous video how you can avoid the big Imperils um, by not doing damage on this turn. And I am going to uh, basically ignore that. Um, we are just going to push on through. Um, <clears throat> yeah, because we really want to do damage here. <laughs> Alright. Um, and so, I will have Kaito. Um, is it next turn? When do I do it? I think it's... Alright. Alright. I believe it is this turn that I start doing that. Yeah. All right, and then, uh, yeah, we're gonna shift back here. Yep, just do some fill, some morale fill here. And the Starlight Atlantis should be strong enough to uh, push this threshold on their own. Um, it may not go, you know, super deep into the threshold, but they should be able to get it done um, without issue. I don't believe she's put up her defense spirit buffs yet. Nope. Yeah, so this should definitely uh, get it done. Alright, I think what I'm actually going to do... Uh... Pretty sure this is what I want to do. Yep, because I'm going to start using the higher brakes this time. Okay. We're getting this. <laughs> you guys are probably like, seriously, dude, didn't you plan this out beforehand? And my answer is kind of, sort of. <laughs> I've done some test runs, uh, but I, you know, haven't written this one down strictly. So, okay, here we go. We're going to push the threshold on this one. Let uh, Aerith build up the chain and go. All right, now Charlotte's gonna die again, thanks to Ghastly Nightmare. This one's guaranteed. Okay. You see the damage to the team is pretty much negligible. All right, so you see we got another true omniscience there, so everyone's imperils uh, are way down. That's okay, because guess what? Uh, we've refreshed Crystal Refrag. The timing works out very well. Um, you know, OG Elena was designed around this trial, um, and so we're gonna do Crystal Refrag, and then we're actually gonna reapply the Human Killer just to make sure we've got it. And let's see, I'm sure we still have the... Wait, do we not have... Alright. Did I do that one? Oh no, I didn't do that. Alright, so here... Yep. I was wondering. I can't even remember what I did last turn. Uh, okay. We're on a 10,000 needles turn for Aerith. <clears throat> okay. Triple Gemini. Alright, so there we go. All the Imperils are removed, everyone's buffed. Sweet! Okay. So now, Kaito is is going to start. Uh, we want to wait until his second cast is, has gone. Actually, we don't really need to, do we? 
Uh, actually, I think what I did here last time. Sorry, bear with me here, guys. All right, we're gonna do Unpredictable Tide to get rid of the Defense and Spirit buff, and then this, right? And so this is gonna kind of clear the way to do another big chunk of damage for the Starlight Elenas and try and get as close, because again, we want to get this done before the Fire and Peril runs out. So how many turns do we have left on that, by the way? Let's see. All right, two more turns. Gonna be cutting it close, aren't we? All right, so that's the Fairy Killer buff. That's to get rid of Defense and Spirit. All right, now we're all uh, Katana Imperiled, and let's go. All right, we should finish this next turn. God forbid something, you know, something crazy happens and we all get wiped. Uh, crazier things have happened on this trial. Things, things get really weird below 30% with this boss. Um, I've had, you know, inexplicable things happen and the team just dies. So, um, shouldn't happen though, shouldn't happen. We should have everything managed. All right, so this is it. We're, we're gonna take this, uh, we're gonna take this one home. And we're gonna get it done. All right. Oh, and, and just to show you that that sword in peril Elena's sword in peril doesn't see. She's still got the sword in peril there, because uh, Elena's sword in peril is undispellable. Just a reminder on that one. Um, all right, in Kaito, start with this one for the katana in peril. All right, might as well give everyone some MP. Looks like a few people are getting a little scarce there. All right. <clears throat> Okay, and Aerith you can go ahead and build up the chain for everyone. Just make sure we're all imbued. All right, getting her done. Boom. Seven turns. All right, that one felt pretty good. That might be my quickest clear. Um, yeah, awesome. We could have, we could have done one more turn with the fire and peril, but that, I, I, I'm kind of glad that worked. This was, this was a bit of a trial, uh, a bit of an experiment to see if that, uh, that undispellable fire and peril would actually work. And it did no fire and peril needed. Um, all right. So yeah, you, you see Starlight Elaine is again, bringing in, uh, the majority of the damage. You can see Aerith did you know, comparable damage to original Elena. Um, so yeah, I mean, she was just there as a chain slave, really. Uh, but she also did a lot for morale fill. Huge for that imperil removal and 100% imperil. So, you know, OG Elena was definitely an MVP for this one. All right. Um, Kaito, you know, chipping in a little bit of damage, but this is all Starlight Elena's party here. So she owns this fight, clearly. All right, uh, I did use a couple of new units on this one, so there we go. I got that one. Um, as you can see, I need, looks like I need three more units to do, uh, to get the rod upgrade. Um, still got a ways to go before I'm, I'm finished with this one, but again, I'm, I'm not, I'm not in any rush here. It would be nice to get that rod upgraded for the increased morale fill. Um, I am working on an Esther, uh, Esther clear, and so I, I really want to do this trial using Esther. Like, it, it kills me that this boss punishes LBU so much, but don't worry. I, I'm going to get in there. Um, I've got the Murder Bunny army behind me. They're building me some, some great, great bunny builds in uh, behind the scenes here, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to taking Esther into, into Morgana. I'm, I'm trying to figure out the team composition, exactly how I'm going to play it out. Um, but yeah, knowing that that limit bursts are are punished pretty pretty heavily in this fight. I'm gonna have to figure out how to work it out. Uh, but when I do figure it out, I will post the video for you guys, and uh, and hopefully we can all enjoy it. Um, I'm also working on the next episode of Murder Bunny's Revenge. Um, I'll be working on that throughout the week. Hopefully, can get it out. Um, usually, I like to release those right around maintenance. Uh, 
So, you know, that'll be Wednesday for you guys, Thursday for me. Um, so be on the lookout. If, if I get it finished sooner, I'll release it sooner. But yeah, uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be working on that, uh, pr pretty hard. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for sticking around with me. I know you're tired of listening to me, uh, but thank you so much for sticking around and, and watching these videos and following me. Thank you to all my subscribers and, uh, I will see you on the other side.